we're going to be talking about how to keep your kitchen stocked with foods from the green group. As we're experiencing social distancing, a lot of us might be looking to add some variety to the foods that we've been eating while we also try to minimize our grocery trips. There are lots of shelf-stable grain options to help with that. The foods that I'm including here today are those that I happen to have at home, so I just want to say that I'm not endorsing any particular brand or product. What I have just happens to be what I or someone in my household purchased. Everyone's nutrition needs are individualized, so you may stock up on different items based on your preferences, your culture, your budget, or your health concerns. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me via the UHC social media handle at UGA Health Center. Now let's get to it and go through some options that we find in the green group. Breads are probably one of the first things that come to mind when we think about the greens in our diet. So we've got some honey wheat bread, some tortillas, other things would be like English muffins, bagels, roti, chapati, um, any different form that bread might take. So let's talk a little bit about kind of identifying whole grains versus refined grains. So we got here our nature's own honey wheat. Sounds great. Um, we can turn it around and you want to look on the ingredients list. So sorry, this is a little bit hard to read. So our first ingredient is unbleached enriched flour. And then further down the ingredient list, we see um, whole wheat flour. So we really want for that first ingredient to be whole wheat flour to indicate that it's in the 100% whole grain product. So this one is actually a mixture between a refined wheat and a whole wheat. So if we kind of go up here, which y'all probably won't be able to see, but I can see um, this product has about one less than one gram of dietary fiber. So it's not gonna provide all that whole grain that we want, but still an okay product. And if that's the one that you like, then that's totally fine too. Um, just wanna be able to identify a whole grain versus a refined grain. This is just an example of all purpose flour. So again, that's the refined grain option. We've got some chickpea flour which is, as you would guess, made from chickpeas and used in like some different international food type recipes. Um, lots of different flour options out there. Just also wanted to show y'all, this is vital wheat gluten. So we hear a lot about gluten, gluten, gluten. What is it? It's a protein that's isolated from wheat that gives kind of that elasticity and structure of bread. So when it's isolated, it just looks like this flour, single ingredient, wheat gluten. So this is used, again, to give some structure in baking, elasticity. It's also used in making some vegetarian meat substitutes as well. So kind of an interesting product. Just wanted to show you all what that is because we hear about gluten so much. Pasta is another staple in the grain group. It's inexpensive and you can get it in a ton of different forms. Again, if you're tired of say spaghetti, you could grab another shape like rotini or something like tortellini or ravioli if you're feeling fancy. Typical pasta like this one is a refined grain, but you can also buy whole wheat pasta that is whole grain. For example, Kroger has store brand whole wheat pasta that's the same price as their regular store brand pasta, which is about a dollar per package, which contains eight servings. Leftover pasta is going to be great in a frittata or tossed in a salad. If you need gluten-free pasta, there's a lot of options available for that. This particular one is made of corn flour and rice flour, so that's appropriate if you're needing to avoid gluten in your diet. Um, kind of newer to the scene are going to be bean-based pastas. This one from Trader Joe's is based in red lentils, but there's others made of black beans or chickpeas, and those are going to be a little bit higher protein content per serving. This one has about 13 grams per serving. If you're making something like an Asian style dish, you might think about using lo mein noodles, even regular spaghetti noodles, or perhaps rice noodles can be a good option there. You know, again, pasta just being generally really inexpensive, very shelf stable, so you can stock up on it with it's on sale and keep it in your cabinet. It's not gonna go bad. Um, some other options for getting more unique noodles might be going to some of the international food stores like Fuchs Foods on Millage has a great selection. Now ramen noodles obviously have a reputation for being a cheap college food. As a dietitian, I really don't advocate categorizing foods as good or bad. I think there's definitely ways you can increase the nutrition in a food like we've been talking about with choosing whole grains instead of refined. So for something like ramen noodles, I would think about adding something to it, something like vegetables, carrots, broccoli, green onions, cilantro, or maybe adding additional protein like an egg or edamame and kind of let that round out your meal a little bit more than just a bowl of plain noodles. 
Ramen also tends to be pretty high sodium food, so you could think about using less of the flavor packet. So this one in particular has 680 milligrams of sodium, which is about a third of the daily value for sodium. So you could use less of the flavor packet. You could omit it completely. You can also buy just the plain noodles at the grocery store. Again, that's gonna be kind of the international foods aisle or going to one of the specialty international food stores that we have in Athens. And then you could make your own broth and kind of make your own ramen night. You know, I've bought those noodles before and the ones that I purchased weren't actually fried, which these ones in the ramen packets tend to be pre-fried. So that was kind of a nutritional bonus to me. Um, but that's kind of a nice way if you want to get a feel for making ramen at home, you could do it from scratch or just really try and increase the nutrition in what you got. Rice is an inexpensive staple grain found in cultures around the world. Here we've got an enriched long grain white rice, and then we've got the whole grain uh, kind of counterpart, which is long grain brown rice. Um, these are gonna take a little bit longer to cook, usually between 15 and 45 minutes. In the back, I've got an arborio rice, which is the type that you'd use to make a risotto. So these take a little bit longer to cook, a little bit more time investment, but they're pretty inexpensive. So this one, I think, has about, um, the long grain brown rice has about 20 servings in the package, and it costs about $2. So pretty low cost per serving. This boiling bag is a great option. It's also gonna be a whole grain, but it's gonna cook a lot faster. So this one cooks in 10 minutes. Now this has eight servings per container and it costs about two or $3. So it's definitely gonna be a cost for that convenience, but can be a nice thing to have on hand if you're not maybe gonna have the time to cook the long grain brown rice for 45 minutes or so. So just kind of two different options of the same thing to have on hand, but maybe you have both. And you know, if you're meal prepping, you might wanna cook that long grain brown rice. And if you're doing something at the last minute, you use that bowl and bag. Um, I've also got quinoa here. Now quinoa is not rice. Quinoa botanically is a seed, but it is a 100% whole grain. It's a little bit higher protein option, can be a nice option for vegetarians looking for a little bit more protein in, in that kind of grain group. And, it also can just be a nice source of variety. So maybe you get tired of rice, throw in some quinoa. There's red and white, nutritionally very similar. A couple other items in the grain group are gonna be our cold and hot cereals, like oats, grits, or cream of wheat, granola, breakfast cereal. So here we've got, as an example of our cold cereal is granola. So we can see both by the marketing on the package as well as the ingredients list that the main ingredient is that whole grain rolled oats. The thing I like about oats is I find them not very confusing. So we've got instant oatmeal, rolled oats, steel cut oats. Um, those are all always gonna be whole grain. There's really not any oats that are not whole grain. The difference is gonna be in how those oats are processed. Like these are really chopped up in instant oatmeal. And of course they're also sweetened and flavored too. These have a slightly larger cut to them and then the steel cut oats are the largest um, cut. And so they just take the longest to cook. Um, but they all are gonna provide that whole grain, those B vitamins, iron, dietary fiber, all that good stuff that we look for in a whole grain. Um, just in a different uh, speed of cooking basically and texture so just find one you like and stick with that um, in addition to oatmeal i've got a package of corn grits here which is also known as polenta so corn grits not just for breakfast anymore polenta is actually a great substitute for like a pasta if you want to serve something like a marinara sauce over polenta instead of pasta noodles kind of fun mix it up here we've got just kind of a hodgepodge of snack foods that fall into the grain group. So that's going to be things like pretzels, crackers, popcorn, cereal bars, that kind of thing. Um, you know, popcorn is something I like as a snack. Popcorn is a whole grain, so you can do something like try buying it plain or lightly salted and then adding your own seasoning. I like to add things like lime juice or this nutritional yeast seasoning, Parmesan cheese, cayenne pepper, or even maybe this popular Trader Joe's everything but the bagel seasoning. Those are all really tasty, kind of mix up your snack, keep it from being monotonous. I think any time that you can season something yourself and have a little bit more um, autonomy over the ingredients is a nice thing, but just a couple more snack foods in the grain group.
Thanks for stopping by to check out our video on stocking your nutritious kitchen. The Health Promotion Department at the University Health Center is here to offer support and keep you connected during spring 2020. Please check out our Be Well UGA at homepage for other virtual programs and services.